Greetings, everybody. This is Ren Diggit It Dalga coming at you in another Minecraft episode from the Hermitcraft server. And we are back at Scabland today, friendos. Yes, back at this monstrosity of a project that you thought I forgot about. I saw you in the comments. No, I have not forgotten about the project, guys. In fact, I have spent the last five or six days solid working on this project. And unfortunately, there's not been much progress made other than a few new bits and bobs added to the facade of what is becoming the ugliest castle ever created in Minecraft. I have spent the last few days, unfortunately, collecting resources because it turns out we needed an absolute insane amount before we could get on with the next part of the project. Of course, we created an insane amount of wool over at Gigacorp Island. But have a look at this book. I have written down here the number of stacks of concrete that I needed. 158 stacks of light gray, 150 stacks of white, 78 stacks of cyan, etc. As well as all of this terracotta that was required. And um, yeah, I have just been grinding off camera. It's been a bit of a pain, guys. Although I did find a new use for the Giga Chopper over at Gigacorp Island. You know that massive TNT machine that we use to chop down trees? Well, it turns out it chops down concrete pretty well too. And on live stream a couple of days ago, we were um, building concrete trees, basically, and then blasting them to pieces with the Giga Chopper. And it was very satisfying. It's still up in the air whether the Giga Chopper made concrete faster than, I don't know, me just chopping it in a pond, but it was definitely more fun. And the good news is we now have all the resources that we need to crack on with Scab Castle. Um, here they begin. You can see all the concrete has been gathered. And I think all the terracotta is on the other side. Yeah, there's all the, the remaining concrete part of all of the different colors. Here's all the terracotta. And we've got all the wool up there on that platform, which means for the next few days, friends... We're going to be grinding away on the castle. Um, yeah, it's hurting my eyes and my brain to be back here. I'm not going to lie. Mostly because, well, we're supposed to be trying to make this thing terrible, right? But there's certain things that are so terrible that it is actually hurting my brain. I mean, take the arch, for example. The urge to fix this is almost tangible in my my mind right now guys it, it it there is a stinging on my lips when i look at this i don't know if any of you guys feel this too but yeah uh, this is outrageous we have to leave it though also something i realized yesterday which sent horrors horror shocks down my very spine was the fact that um uh well how do i say this um yeah Scabland is backwards. <laughs> Scab Castle is backwards. I made the castle back to front. Yeah, can you guys see it now? If you go have a, if we go have a look at Scabland, this part of the castle where these two massive turrets are, that's actually the back of Scarland. And yeah, as you can see, I've built it the wrong way around. This is the grand entrance of Scab Castle, which is now the grand exit from Scab Castle into Scab Land. And there is a part of me that wants to tear this whole thing down and rebuild it in the correct uh, alignment. But I suppose we'll just go with the flow. Scab Castle is supposed to be the antithesis of Scar Castle. Vis-a-vis, -vis, this is how it is. This castle is backwards. The arch is wonky. And I have got thousands of blocks to place this morning. So I've got myself a fresh cup of coffee here, guys. And first things first, we need to plonk on a roof of light gray uh, a, a, across the entire top of this castle expanse. So, yeah, I guess I'll work out some sort of a montage or something. We'll see you guys in a... It is a second on YouTube, but in a lifetime of my IRL. Why are we doing this again? Can anybody tell me, please? Why? Why?
Oh my goodness, guys, I can't believe it. We're approaching the end of another real life day and the castle is not yet done. Although, as you can see, some very serious progress has been made on this bad boy. Many thousands of blocks have been placed and very large portions of Raindog's brain have melted. I can tell you with all honesty in my heart that this has been one of the most boring things that I've ever had to build. Unlike a Good Times with Scars build, this castle has zero detail, nothing interesting, nothing fun worth building. Just giant walls of the same material over and over and over again. And if anything, this project has taught me two things. Number one, Scar is an absolute genius maniac. Scarland Castle is a true work of art. I mean, I, I've really come to appreciate the immense scope that is Scar's Castle after working on this. This castle is not, of course, a one-to-one -one replica of Scarland Castle, but it is the same kind of size and the same kind of uh, resource requirement, I guess, minus, of course, the completely empty interior. But I gotta say, working on this has really given me some appreciation for how incredible Scarland Castle is and why it is one of the most beautiful things ever created on the Hermacraft server. You know, it, uh, this thing is, I mean, it's interesting and it's kind of fun and kind of cool, but it really pales in com comparison to the artistic genius that it is trying to satirize. Um, anyway, I am determined to get this thing finished in this episode, or at least get the majority of it done. And I thought I would bring you back for a little bit of a fun thing that we get to do now, which is, of course, turning all of this concrete powder into concrete. And we get to do that with water, and we get to do it in a very satisfying way, right? Check this out. All we got to do is pour the water on the concrete, and we should see it concretificating all the way from the top to the bottom. And uh, that is super cool. I don't even think we have to worry too much about... Uh, the time here as long as the water starts to flow we can actually yoink the water source back up with the bucket and uh, we can move on to the next one quite quickly and we should be able to do all of this nice and fast and of course this is going to save ample time instead of converting all of this concrete powder into manual uh, concrete we get to do this uh, nice and I guess quickly and easily although there are little bits here that we need to make sure that we don't miss and I've got a few of these towers we have to do. We've got this red one over here. And uh, then there's a lime one around the corner too. And an orange one, I think, too. And then the rest of these things. Oh, and there's this massive cyan one too. Which uh, is going to be kind of fun to do. You know what? Why don't we do this one together? Because this will make quite a cool view, I think. Let's see if we can get this entire wall done. Uh, all together in one go. We've got six water buckets. And I guess if we separated the water flows like every whoopsie I guess that's also fine if we miss it's totally cool if we do something like this get into the gigabug and um much like everything else in this project that did not quite go to plan <laughs> but it is very satisfying though seeing all that concrete uh, getting created all the way down from the top to the bottom and I do have a feeling that at some point if I can remember correctly from Scar's Scarland production episodes didn't Scar do this at one point in the production of the Scarland Castle? Pretty sure there was a moment where Scar needed to make a bunch of concrete walls. And I don't know if it was in that, uh, in the Scarland Castle or in uh, some other part of the project, but I feel like we're paying homage here to uh, Scar's amazing work by doing a bit of our own concretificating um, <laughs> over on this project. Oh my goodness, Tango is in my brain for some reason, no idea why. Um, but yeah, it's going to take me another week or so to get all of the Tango stuff out of my brain, I think. My goodness, the infection is real, friends. My dearest viewers, I have just had a mild revelation while doing all of this concreting. We're going to have a problem with mob spawning in this castle, uh, in its current form. There are very many mob traps all over the place that will start to spawn thousands of mobs the moment that we put a roof over this thing. Let's just take a look of, at this castle from above, shall we? Yes, as you can see, every single one of these chambers is a mob spawning farm of note. And there's no light down there, no torches, no nothing. 
which means that along with the concreting of this entire castle, we're going to have to also do some torching, uh, which I suppose won't take too long, but it is going to mean coming down into these giant turrets and placing a bunch of torches to stop any mob spawning, because unlike Scarland, Scabland will be mob free. Which I guess is kind of ironic, because if anything, this place should be covered in creepers and mobs, but yeah, we are trying to stick true to our mantra that this place will be the opposite of Scarland. And uh, any good Scar project is generally a giant mob farm, so this must be the exact opposite. It does mean, of course, though, that we now have a lot more work to do to make sure that no mobs are spawning within the shell of this giant castle facade, but um, yeah, at this point I'm just going to say that this is a piece of art, okay guys? We're doing this for art, it's a happy accident, um, it's art for art's sake, all of the above, uh, and there's every good reason why we did this in the first place, that's just what we're going to tell ourselves from now on, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it, because any other story is going to make me probably smash my head into a wall, yes. Uh, concrete and lights. Let's get it done, shall we? Blue River Raceway fans, welcome back to the pavilion. And there is electricity in the air this week, everybody. We are just a few days away from the Hermitcraft Grand Prix. And I thought we'd take a quick break from the Scabland Castle project to come and have a look at the final preparations that I have made on BRR. And uh, I don't think you guys have seen this yet. I have finished making the scoreboard area. If anybody wants to come and try and get some race times down. Azum has been doing some practicing. He's very keen to win the Grand Prix, which is great. And uh, well, at the moment, we're ahead on 4 minutes and 28 as the fastest lap. Azuma's on 4.48, so not far away. Looking pretty good. Um, and yes, of course, here we have the final statue for the winner of the Grand Prix. That is just a few days away. Oh, I am so excited. I cannot wait. We're going to be live streaming the event. And if you are watching this in real time, it is going to be this coming Friday. And if you're watching this video sometime in the future, well, you missed it. I will probably post the entire Grand Prix unedited to the, the, the channel or the stream of it anyway. And you can watch the Grand Prix as it unfolded uh, in the past, if you are from the past. And I'm getting confused. It's the present now and in just a few days is the Grand Prix. Okay, brain melting. Guys, there is one more awesome bit of technology that I have built into the Grand Prix that I wanted to show you. And this bit of technology is inspired by a lot of the testing that we've been doing here at BRR. We've been having a couple races with some friends and uh, some of the hermits have been helping me test the track and whatnot. And what we have realized is that Blue River Raceway needs some sort of a catch-up mechanic. Those who are very far behind, who are struggling, who are bumping into the walls, uh, as I'm sure you've seen some of the fine racers doing, they get stuck like this and they fall so far behind. I would like to give them a chance to catch up. And so, on Grand Prix Day, there is going to be a rule in place. Each racer is allowed to have a boat and an elytra and a sword in their inventory when they begin racing. And the reason they need the sword is because we are going to allow racers to break their boats like this. Now, the reason that they'd want to break their boats is because scattered around the course, I have installed rocket catch-up points. And the way these things work is that whenever a racer goes through this checkpoint, a rocket will drop and whoever's behind them can pick up the rocket. And if they want to, they can get out their boat, break their boat, and use the rocket to fly. This is going to help particularly for those who are very far behind because each racer that goes through the checkpoint is going to spit out a rocket, sometimes a couple of rockets, because if we trigger this thing, we will see that fireworks will go off indicating that a rocket has been released. And sometimes the rocket will land once again on the trigger and drop another one. So there is a chance that multiple rockets will drop and this is going to give anyone who's behind, right? So say I'm very far behind and I want to catch up. I can jump out the boat, break the boat, and then rocket my way as for as many uh, rockets as I have picked up. So if you picked up five rockets, you can use five rockets, etc. Of course, the only rules is you have to stay in the boundary of the track. You may not do a shortcut like this. You must stay within the boundaries. 
And, uh, you know, if you pick up, a, I don't know, an average between one and five rockets, that will give the racers at the back a chance to catch up. Because the race is only one lap, of course, uh, those who are in front will not benefit from any rockets that have dropped. And it is only those that are very far behind that will get a chance to dodge some of the more difficult areas like this Impulse SV filter over here. And uh, yeah, this is a very exciting addition to the race, I think. It's going to stop the feel-bad moments for those racers who are really, really struggling. And a little bit like Mario Kart, when you get the rocket catch-up mechanic, you know, you t turn into a huge rocket and you can fly at rapid speeds uh, to catch up to those who are in front. You never really catch up, but it makes you feel like you're at least um, doing something and you aren't just getting completely wrecked by the game. Now, I've been a bit stingy with these rocket catch-up checkpoints because we don't want to make this race into an elytra race. Uh, I don't want to add these things all over the course. I have just added one there at the very first section and then I believe the next catch-up rocket is uh, halfway through the Polar Bear Express and yes, as you can see, it is going to benefit some of our races greatly because Getting through the Polar Bear Express is a pretty difficult task at the best of times, even for someone like me who has basically raced this course hundreds of times at this point. Uh, it is quite a frustrating section of track. In fact, from the feedback that I have been monitoring, I think the Polar Bear Express is the most hated section of the race course. Here's the next uh, rocket checkpoint here, of course. Um, and yes, that's why you may have noticed I put Polar Bear heads inside of the pavilion where, where the players can come and swap the polar bear heads for their own race heads uh, just to get a bit of revenge on the polar bears i suppose but yes as you can see so far in the race only three rocket catch-up checkpoints have been added and i do not believe there's any more rocket catch-ups until ethos section of the track in fact all the way from that last one the racers are going to have to try and do as well as possible no rocket checkpoints before or after a uh, Blue Rock Tunnel and no rocket checkpoints until the racers have got through the majority of Ethos section, including the Villager Capture section over here. And uh, the next rocket checkpoint will be over here, just on the other side of probably Ethos' most difficult part of the course, which is the Villager Shortcut and the Squiggy Squiggles over there. And um, that should give the racers a nice bit of an opportunity to dodge the snowmen if they want and probably get them all the way over to Minecart Alley. The final rocket checkpoint is installed all the way near the end of the race, which I think is a very exciting way for those who are perhaps at the back. Uh, uh, these are all um, firework rockets. Yes, I've been setting up these checkpoints this morning. But yes, there's another checkpoint, uh, or should I say catch-up checkpoint over here. And this is those who are jostling for final position, I suppose, will get a lovely little boost here where they can hop out their boat and fly as fast as possible. Of course, there is some skill involved in getting out your boat, breaking it as fast as possible, and you make you have to pick the boat up afterwards, right? Because what can happen is you jump out the boat, break the boat, and if you don't pick the boat up, you are in big trouble. You're going to lose out. So that's something that the, the hermits will have to pay attention to. Remember to break your boats, hermits. Uh, before you actually use your rocket catch up and uh, yes of course uh, at this point I think there might be a rule that yeah you could probably jump out the boat and rocket your way through the finish line that is totally fine too um, but yes that's the catch up mechanic for a Blue River Race for everybody the Grand Prix just around the corner I am so excited I just simply cannot wait everything else is done we've completed the course it is ready to go the Hermits that are going to be racing have all signed up. Everybody's ready to, to, to get the race going. And it is going to be a wonderful time. Live streamed on Twitch. Everybody's going to be streaming. We're going to try to do some spectatoring magic. And we're going to work this out. And by the way, just a final note on the catch-up checkpoints. So first one is over here. Next one is over here. Next one is all the way halfway through the Polar Bear Express over here. Uh, and the second to last one is over here after Ethos section. And the final one, of course, is over here. Uh, just before we go into the finish line. So that is the catch up for BRR and uh, Grand Prix just a few days away. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Please make sure you come and join us, guys. You can follow me on twitch.tv forward slash Rendog TV or all of the other hermits that are going to be racing and streaming. They'll be streaming too. So just keep your eyeballs open on Twitch. 7 p.m. UK time. 7 p.m. UK time. Around there, uh, we are going to be kicking off festivities at BRR. 
and uh, it's going to be a, an amazing time. But listen, we still got a ton of work to do over at Scabland Castle, guys. So I'm just going to spend the next couple of days building. And when the castle is done, we will hopefully be done with that project because I am very tired of building that castle. Not going to lie. Scar, I don't know how you found the willpower to finish Scar Castle, which is a thousand times better than my castle. You, sir, are an absolute champion of Minecraft and Hermitcraft. And uh, what we created pales in comparison to what Scarland has become, which must surely be one of the greatest things ever made in Hermitcraft. Big shout out to Scarland. It's just amazing. Now that view, my dear friends from all over the Gigaverse, is a sobering reminder of how terrible Scabland Castle is. Yes, indeed. Scarland Castle looming up into the blue sky of Minecraft, looking beyond magnificent. And not only is this castle insane, uh, this volcano, I didn't even know what to say. Uh, one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen created in vanilla Minecraft. Superb. And Scarland itself, I mean, just look at this. Is this not just an eye-melting bit of Minecraft art that the brain can barely fathom how a human being has created this? I mean, just superb. Oh my goodness, wait a minute, what's what's that about? <laughs> that cannot be good. Um, is, I, is that a part of the attraction? It, it must be, right? Um, okay, good. Right, let's not go too far into Scarland, shall we? Because there be surprises and delights that are found within this insane build. Instead, let us head across the perimeter to what we have created. This has taken us a good few months to build, and I am at this point in my life questioning why I did any of this. It is confusing to me as to what made my brain want to create this castle. However, I am proud to say that it is done. It is built, it is created, it looks absolutely insane over there <laughs> on the edge of the perimeter. Uh, it's unclear whether this enhances the perimeter or ruins the perimeter. I I'll leave you guys to decide in the comments. I do hope that he does not regret uh, what has occurred in here. By the way, absolutely insane work here in the perimeter. Makes my monstrosity just pale in comparison. Although what I will say is that the hideousness of Scabland Castle, I think, helps to certainly um, amplify the incredibleness of the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I made Scabland Castle to make Doc's perimeter look incredible. That is, that, that, that's the deal. We're going to go with that storyline. Uh, but yes, welcome to Scabland Castle, guys. It is done. It is completed. It is a monstrosity of the most epic proportions. I cannot even begin to explain to you how boring making this thing was. And I shall never do something like this ever again. Um, the fact that there was no block variation, no artistic um, creativity involved in this... It kind of reminded me of those sketchbooks that you can get where you have the outline of things already printed and you just fill in the colors with crayons. It's fun, uh, but are you really making a thing? I don't know. I think you're half making a thing because, of course, this thing uh, was designed off the back of the Sc Scarland Castle uh, design. And yes, it is just a very poor replication of it. However, I am very proud of this build. It's one of the biggest things I've ever built. Um, and it took forever. It took a couple weeks to, to do all of this, including collecting all the resources and building it and finding the willpower to place all of these blocks. And, you know, there are very many scabalicious features that I'm most proud of. And you need to look quite closely to spot them. But maybe I'll try and show a few of them to you because there's quite a few things to mention. Firstly, of course, as we mentioned in the beginning of the episode, the castle is actually the wrong way around, which is my number one bugbear of this entire project so far. It is the one thing that I'm actually struggling to accept. I wish that I had built it the correct way around, but I guess it does fit our narrative of trying to create something that is the opposite 
of the awesomeness of Scarland. Yeah, so castles the wrong way around. If you have a look at the windows, all the windows are in different levels. They, they, they're not symmetrical. They don't line up. Some of the windows are innies and some of the windows are alties. The spires are all a mess. None of them are symmetrically built. Some are, uh, well, I think one, uh, like a couple of symmetrically built and then the rest are an absolute mess. There are blocks out of place. There are windows missing. Uh, there is all sorts of levels that should be connected but aren't. There are missing doors where there should be doors. Uh, the archways are not diag are not properly built and not properly symmetrical like we can see over here. The interior is completely empty, of course. Uh, there is nothing inside of any of this. It is all perfectly lit up, though, and completely mob-proof, which is one of the primary goals of finishing this castle. And uh, all in all, there is zero block variation, zero artistic integrity involved. And thus, I believe, we have concluded the brief. Make a castle that is as ugly as possible and the direct opposite to the awesome of Scarland. I, I can't believe that I've done it, but I do believe that it is done. And um, yes, I'm going to be quite happy to see the back of this thing. I don't really ever want to come and place another block here again. Of course, Scabland itself is currently completely devoid of life and um, completely devoid of any sort of structure except for Cub Fan's game. But what I've come to realize is that this is actually awesome because Scarland is like 99% completed. And Scabland is, well, I would say 1% completed. And uh, maybe it's better that we just leave it this way. You know, it kind of fits the narrative. Uh, it is an uncompleted project, will never be completed, unlike Scarland, and will forever remain one of the ugliest things that any hermit has ever made. I'm not sure if I should be proud about that, but um, I am pleased that I undertook this endeavor. It was... <laughs> Certainly out of my comfort zone, and uh, it made me use parts of my brain that maybe should never have been used. Uh, the parts of the brain including make things ugly. That's definitely a part of my brain that I never used in my life before. So, um, yes, Scabland Project, I believe we're going to call it a day here. <laughs> it is done. Uh, it is done because it is not done, right? It's incompletedness is what completes it, and... Uh, I would love to say that this project has completed me, but it has actually torn me asunder in many, many ways. Now, listen, there is one last thing to do in this episode, guys. I want to say a big shout out to my fellow hermit, uh, uh, Jevin, who succeeded in one of his primary and most insane goals for this season, which was to complete the construction of a vanilla Minecraft netherite beacon. That's right. Jevin spent the majority of his season trying to create enough netherite to make a beacon i can't believe he actually did it and we all came together a few days ago to uh congratulate him and bask in the gloriousness that is a netherite beacon if you've never seen a netherite beacon in vanilla minecraft well here on the hermitcraft server i'm proud to say that one of our hermits did it they actually did it and i'm so proud of jevin i'm so proud to be a part of hermitcraft when such amazing things are um achieved on this great server and uh yeah, I had a really fun time hanging out with the Hermits for the unveiling of that. So, last part of this video, let's go and enjoy Jevin's moment of, well, this victory is the only way I can describe it. Pure and, and utter victory. Netherite beacon created, minds blown, and my friends, I am delighted to say that the next time we see each other will probably be at the Hermitcraft Grand Prix. And I just, oh, I can't wait. Just a few days to go! What happens if we flick this lever? Don't do it, don't, don't do it. Don't I do wouldn't it. do it. <laughs> There's a bunch of fireworks that come out. Oh, okay. He thought about it still. He, it was very difficult to resist. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie. Dude, what is this? It's nine. <laughs> Jeff is late for his own ribbon ceremony. I can't believe it. As a German, a that dance. kills me. Doc, did you get dressed him, up for this? Took him longer than expected. No, to why? <laughs> it's a formal event. Got my, got <laughs> hey my maid dress out. How's everybody doing? Hello. Good. 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 I would like to thank you all for coming to my netherite beacon ceremony or ribbon cutting thing. I appreciate you guys. Wait, wait. Thanks. Where's the ribbon? Out goes the egg. 
uh, the, the ribbon kind of, uh, uh, listen, we, it's we a symbolic ordered it, ribbon. Well, we ordered it Amazon prime and they messed up the shipping. Okay. I can them. tell you a story about it. <laughs> My right, cell so... phone loading cable, but yeah, long story. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's still holding the grudge over the cable. So statistics for this beacon, um, I knew right away that I wanted to make it. And so the season started on, I think it was March 22nd. So around the, the 25th of the March 22nd, the 25th, 2022. So it's been what a year and a like smidge or something. Like a year and a smidge. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It's, right. it's been, a, it's been a while and I've dedicated an hour here, an hour there to just getting this done. And so I'm going to give you guys some statistics on things mined and crafted so for example the the highest statistic that i have is netherrack which is seven hundred and ninety four thousand netherrack mined ridiculous not even um, a million nice. not, not, <laughs> not even, even a million week. You're weak. Yeah. <laughs> that's not even counting all the stuff you tnt how many too. tnt yeah. yeah so tens looking, of a perimeter <laughs> looking at the tnt statistic for times crafted i'm at 44,971 TNT crafted. Wow, that's a lot of fire. Uh, <laughs> that's and insane. Then there's, wow. There's, there's one other statistic that we should look at here, and that's mobs killed, because you can't make TNT without gunpowder. And I have a dedicated gunpowder farm for this, and I killed 69,720 creepers. Wow. Perfect. Wow. So, nice. Almost nice. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So it, this is um this has oh, been a long be. time. Ooh, there it goes. Yeah. It's so tasty. So good. Dude, I think I've I, never uh, seen a legit uh, netherite beacon right. with my yeah. own eyes. Me neither. That's a this first is in Minecraft for That's me. That's the real deal too. That's the and real I'll, deal. I'll be honest with you. Uh, if I could give you advice on Ooh. making this beacon, just don't do it. Just <laughs> it's not I'll be glad we weren't going no. to, Jeff. Dude, but it's so shiny. Look how cool. Oh. Does it do it anything? Good, it... This is a good looking block, you gotta say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, touch it. Yeah. Touch it. I would love to it. build with it. Imagine go. that together with lots of copper. I mean, that would look fly. Oh, yeah, the man. copper looks would look so fantastic. Good. Doc, don't be getting so. any ideas now. Don't be getting any ideas. <laughs> does, does a netherite yeah. beacon make you super powerful, like amazing, ridiculously overpowered? Yeah, it should. It should. Right? It should. I, I do wish there was like an achievement for it, but yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. Dude. laughs> Mojang, yeah. Mojang, if you if you're watching this, come on, man, give this man his achievement. Yeah, please. Yeah, he it. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, uh, yeah. it's it's been a long. I the the people that I have to thank the most are my Twitch viewers because they endured <laughs> they a year of me being in the Nether just nonstop. <laughs> yep. so. Oh, but Those worth it. Here we go. It. Oh, oh right. wow! As we mentioned, I am going to use an ingot. Of course, light. yes, so, of course. In style. All right. So the the real question is, what effect do we choose? Um. Oh, yes. Man, it should give you. Pick two. You know, yeah, that, that, should, that should give you all, right. all effects at once if you create yeah, such a beacon. Man, it should yeah. be like a year and a half. Sure. Come on, uh, you never go wrong with haste. This. Uh, right, big jump, <laughs> big jump, so mining. that we can dance. Oh, big jump, oh, yeah, jump boost, done. jump boost, oh, no. yay! I am uh, insane, Jeff. Oh my goodness! Wow! Oh. Rip my ears. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. <laughs> wow. Was that really necessary? Wow. Yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. Is that necessary, Red? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must have taken you ages to set up all those fireworks, Jeremy. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, luckily, Tub offered to do the fireworks. So, yeah. I daytime to fireworks, Tub, too. So, daytime yeah, fireworks. Yeah. Wow. Daytime fireworks, yeah. It looks really good, so. Yeah. So, thank you this guys so epic. much for coming to the beacon, uh, the reveal of this thing, and just supporting it because it's taken like so long to finish so it shall forever be known as right. the beacon. so next season you're going to do a double yeah. a double yeah. beacon doc i'm expecting <laughs> you to do a double <laughs> beacon you got <laughs> listen yeah. you got the hive mind and they can one make of these in every base right yeah, yeah. episode one doc <laughs> yeah, man, you all the machine season. all right oh, all right i'll take that challenge yeah. let's see i gotta say this beacon <laughs> looks so amazing it looks so it cool it does look really cool it does look nice <sighs> it doesn't like 
I've been working on it for so long, although it's complete and in front of my face and I can see it, it doesn't feel like it's done. <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like, wow, I really have to get that much debris and like, you know. Yeah. So. Now you need to find a new purpose in life, man. <laughs> the question is, was it worth it? Yeah, when you look at it, does it make you happy or does it make you angry? <laughs> it makes me think, what did I do? What was I doing with my life? You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I think so it was angry worth it. it is then. Yeah, no. It, I think it was worth it because, you know, first time in Hermitcraft's history this has ever been done. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It was definitely so, worth it. It's an insane achievement, Jake. In general, yeah. man, I don't think it has been done too many times. Like yeah. fully documented, fully so, legit, you know, with the streams yeah. and, you know, yeah. like there's no yeah. cheating going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many times this has been done. Would be interesting oh. to know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's makes me very proud to see it on, on our server. Of players now, Jevin. Yeah. Mm. Not too many people in the world have done this. Beacon? You can bet. People that need <laughs> to go to people group that need to, go to the to the, to the oh, yeah. is what that is. Could you imagine? It would be nice to know how <laughs> many people actually <laughs> did this. Maybe a handful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody get like a replay mod or something? We can get a yeah, I'm taking a screenshot with free cam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that beautifully oh, formed triangle. Like this is some nice. Excellent. All right, smile. <laughs> Cheese. The hermit beacon. Wait, I need to look Thank up you. a bit. The hermit One more. Beacon. All right, That's all right, awesome. here we go. Excellent. And cheese. Oh, right. oh, yeah, I'm depressed. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> yes, there we go. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Good job, man. All right. I see that. Jeff. Absolutely right. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh. Nice. Well, I think, it, I think it's missing something. It needs a sign that says Jeff did this. Uh, yeah. that's, I mean, we already had the ceremony. That's a little much, in my opinion. But Why don't like... you put your head on top of the... the, the... <laughs> yeah, wait, somebody kill him. Uh, somebody <laughs> <got a gentleman laughs>